China's relationship with the IMF is increasingly tense, driven by concerns over fairness and representation, despite its substantial economic role. Beijing criticizes the IMF's quota system, strict loan conditions, and perceived political bias, arguing these hinder developing nations' progress. Frustrated by slow reforms and U.S. resistance, China is exploring alternatives like the Belt and Road Initiative and new financial institutions. Stay tuned to discover how these moves could reshape global finance and what it means for the future of international economic systems. Underrepresentation in the IMF China's underrepresentation in the International Monetary Fund IMF, is a notable issue given its economic stature. Despite contributing about 18% to the global economy, China holds just over 6% of the IMF's voting shares. This gap restricts China's influence in IMF decision-making compared to its economic input. Efforts to adjust the IMF's quota system have been sluggish and encounter resistance, especially from the United States, which holds veto power with a 16.5% share. The U.S. is hesitant to support changes that would boost China's voting power citing concerns about China's role in global debt relief and transparency in foreign exchange practices. U.S. officials argue that any increase in China's quota should come with greater responsibility and adherence to international standards. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva supports reforms to better align the IMF structure with the current global economic landscape. She has called for a deadline to adjust the shareholding structure to address the imbalance between China's economic weight and its voting power. This initiative is part of broader efforts to ensure the IMF has the resources to tackle global economic issues. The U.S. resistance partly stems from political challenges, including the difficulty of securing congressional approval for such reforms. This challenge is further complicated by a polarized domestic environment and geopolitical rivalries, making substantial changes to the IMF's voting structure difficult. G7 versus BRICS According to the latest data, the G7 countries hold the following voting shares in the IMF. The United States 16.5%, Japan 6.14%, Germany 5.31%, France 4.03%, the United Kingdom 4.03%, Canada 2.22%, and Italy 3.02%. These figures demonstrate the significant influence of G7 countries within the IMF. In contrast, BRICS countries have much lower voting shares. China 6.08%, India 2.63%, Russia 2.59%, Brazil 2.22%, and South Africa 0.64%. The disparity between G7 and BRICS voting shares has been a major point of contention. BRICS nations argue that the current quota system does not accurately reflect their growing economic roles and global economic realities. The higher voting shares of G7 countries highlight the historical dominance of Western powers in global financial governance. This dominance has led to frustrations among BRICS nations, who seek more balanced representation that reflects their economic significance. By advocating for quota reforms and establishing alternative financial institutions, BRICS aims to create a more inclusive and representative global financial system, challenging the traditional dominance of the G7. China's response the United States and its allies have been hesitant to increase China's influence within the IMF. This hesitation is partly due to concerns about China's adherence to shared financial principles and its role in global debt relief efforts. The U.S. argues that China should be more transparent about its foreign exchange practices and more responsible in its lending to poorer countries before it can gain more voting power. In response to these criticisms, China has defended its approach to international financing and debt relief, emphasizing its commitment to international standards and transparency. China argues that its investments in developing countries, especially in infrastructure projects, are crucial for economic growth and are conducted based on principles of openness and mutual benefit. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mei Min has explicitly rejected U.S. criticisms, asserting that China does not attach political conditions to its loans or pursue selfish political interests. Beijing insists that its financial cooperation with developing countries is intended to foster growth and development without the onerous conditions often imposed by Western lenders. Additionally, China has called for multilateral development banks, MDBs, such as the World Bank, to be more actively involved in debt relief efforts. Chinese officials argue that these institutions, which offer loans at lower interest rates, should also share the responsibility for debt restructuring to ensure a fair and comprehensive approach. 
However, this stance has faced skepticism from other international creditors who argue that MDBs already offer favorable borrowing terms. IMF History The International Monetary Fund was established in 1944 during the Bretton Woods Conference with the goal of promoting global monetary cooperation, securing financial stability, facilitating international trade, boosting employment, and reducing global poverty. The INF was created to address the economic issues that led to the Great Depression and World War II. Its founders, primarily Western nations led by the United States and the United Kingdom, designed the IMF to manage exchange rates and provide short-term capital to countries facing balance of payments problems. The IMF structure and governance reflect the mid-20th century geopolitical landscape, where Western powers had significant influence. Voting power within the IMF is based on a country's financial contribution to the fund, leading to a disproportionate share of voting power for the United States and other Western nations. This has historically given them considerable sway over IMF policies and decisions. China's conflicts with the IMF are rooted in this historical context. The IMF's governance structure, established during a period of Western dominance, does not adequately reflect today's global economic landscape where China plays a major role. Additionally, the IMF's policy recommendations and lending conditions, which often focus on fiscal austerity, liberalization, and structural adjustments, have been criticized by China as being too rigid and not always suitable for the specific needs of developing countries. Furthermore, the historical dominance of the United States in the IMF has led to perceptions of political bias, with critics arguing that the IMF sometimes aligns with U.S. foreign policy interests. This perception has driven China to seek alternative financial mechanisms that operate independently of Western political influence, promoting a multipolar world order with a more prominent role for China. Belt and Road Initiative China has been actively promoting alternatives to the IMF, notably through the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, and its participation in the BRICS Group. These alternatives offer funding to developing countries without the strict conditions often associated with IMF loans. However, the BRI has faced criticism for issues such as lack of transparency, corruption, and leading to unsustainable debt in recipient countries. Launched in 2013, the BRI aims to develop a vast network of infrastructure projects, including railways, highways, ports, and energy pipelines across multiple continents, with China investing over $1 trillion in various projects. Despite its ambitious goals, the BRI has been criticized in the West for fostering corruption, environmental damage, and unsustainable debt in participating nations. In response, China has defended the initiative by highlighting the mutual benefits of its investments and adherence to international standards. Chinese officials argue that their financing supports development and economic growth without political strings attached. For instance, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mei Ming has countered claims of debt traps and transparency issues, asserting that Chinese investments are conducted transparently. Despite Western criticisms, China continues to advance the BRI as a strategic tool to enhance its global influence and create new economic connections outside traditional Western-dominated financial systems. The BRI is viewed as a way for China to build infrastructure, boost trade, and strengthen economic ties with developing countries, challenging the current international economic order led by institutions like the IMF and the World Bank. China's Economic Strategy China's broader economic strategy focuses on reducing reliance on Western financial systems and increasing self-sufficiency. This involves developing its own financial institutions and mechanisms for international trade and investment, such as the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the BRICS New Development Bank. By doing this, China aims to create a more multipolar world where it plays a central role rather than being dependent on Western-dominated institutions like the IMF. The AIIB, launched in 2016, is a multilateral development bank aimed at supporting infrastructure development in the Asia-Pacific region. It serves as a competitor to the World Bank and IMF, reflecting China's strategy to provide an alternative source of development finance with fewer stringent conditions. The AIIB's financing approach is more flexible and aligns with China's broader goals of fostering development and enhancing its geopolitical influence in the global south. Through these initiatives, China aims to reshape the international economic order to better reflect a multipolar world and reduce Western financial dominance. By offering alternative financing options, 
China not only advances its own economic interests, but also strengthens economic and political ties with developing countries, thereby boosting its global standing. Additionally, China is promoting the renminbi as an international currency to increase its use in global trade and finance, reducing reliance on the US dollar and other Western currencies. Through these multifaceted strategies, China seeks to build a more balanced global economic system that accommodates its growing economic power and geopolitical ambitions. How do you view China's moves to reshape global financial systems? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to join the Revel Discovery community by hitting that subscribe button to stay updated on the latest in global finance and economic trends. Dive into a world of financial insights with us for an exciting future.